made thousands of citizens in our country and city feel like crime is the only option when they want to get ahead in life. Today we are going to talk to Detective Kevin Bam with the Metropolitan Crime Commission and we are going to talk about how to stop crime. I'm Kimberly Warren. Hang on to your seat. You're in for a treat. You are watching Joy in Our Town. Detective Kevin Bam, how nice are you doing? You I'm great. It is good to have you here. You Thank know, you. it seems like every time we turn on the news or read the paper, um, someone else has destroyed someone else's life, property, family. And unfortunately, it may continue to be a reoccurring theme. But tell us why you do what you do as you represent the Kansas City Metropolitan Crime Commission. Sure. So uh, as part of the Crime Commission, one of the... Uh, organizations underneath the umbrella of the Crime Commission includes the Crime Stoppers Tips Hotline. Okay. And I'm the coordinator for that program currently. Been in that position for about six years. Mm -hmm. And what Crime Stoppers does, if your viewers are not familiar with it, it's an organization that's been around, it'll be 40 years next year. It actually originated in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And there's just two key components to Crime Stoppers. Mm -hmm. Number one, we take anonymous information okay. from citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, on felony crimes mm -hmm. and the second component is we actually pay cash rewards to those citizens if an arrest is made. Wow. Okay. We're going to put this number on the screen many times so people can understand. Right. Again, you said the TIPS hotline is anonymous. Correct. You're looking for citizens to help you have closure or solve the crime. Correct. And so we're going to put that number up first. Um, it's the Kansas City Metropolitan Crime Commission. Crime Stoppers comes under that umbrella. And the 800 number or the toll-free number is 816-474-TIPS. That's 816-474-TIPS or 474-8477. So... You've been with the police force for some time now. How, how long? Uh, I've actually been with the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department for uh, 22 years. Just incredible. Thank you for the job that you do every oh, day, thanks. first off. Um, let's talk about how we solve crime, because some people see the policeman with the badge, with the car, with the gun, and say, you have the authority, clean up my block. I called you to arrest this person who's endangering our quality of life or our children. Go do the job. And actually, who's a part of your team? Because I know it's not just... Kevin Bam. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's like, okay, the super S, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. So Crime Stoppers is actually a, a tripartite organization. So there's three components to Crime Stoppers. Okay. Number one is the community. They're the ones that supply the tips to us. You anonymously. started right off with us. <laughs> so they, well, they're important. They're okay. extremely important. Mm -hmm. We don't have a program if they're not willing to call us. Okay. Number two is law enforcement. So law enforcement does the investigation. The mm -hmm. community provides the support. And then law enforcement does the investigation. Mm -hmm. And then third is the media. The okay. media is extremely important because you guys are the ones that help us get mm -hmm. the word out, explain to the people what we do, mm -hmm. hopefully convince them that, that they should have faith in us. Mm -hmm. uh, our program here locally has been in existence 33 years. We've taken over 133,000 anonymous tips. Incredible. We've paid out over $1.3 million in cash rewards. And... In that period of time, over 10,700 felony arrests have been made thanks to information provided by the community. Incredible. So, what kind of crimes are prevalent and should they call on all crimes to be solved um, to this tip hotline? Okay, so we are, by our bylaws, we're governed by a set of rules and we handle felony crimes. Okay. So any felony crime that, that uh, occurs, we will take that anonymous information. That crime is then eligible should an arrest be made for a cash reward. Now, we get calls all the time for crimes that don't rise to the level of a felony. Mm -hmm. So we will always provide resources to the callers in those situations. Okay. But unfortunately, we can't, our program can't get involved mm -hmm. in that particular case unless it's a felony. So do, is it a good rule just to call if there's a crime in progress and not to make that decision, mm, this might be a felony, this may not be? There's a couple components there. Okay. So if there's a crime in progress, mm -hmm. we don't recommend that you call us. Okay. If there's a crime in progress, you need to call 911. Okay. Because our office, although I am a sworn law enforcement officer, mm -hmm. we don't dispatch from our office. Good to know. And the only reason that I am there is because the information we see, we see or we get from the community, mm -hmm. sometimes it's law enforcement sensitive, and I do some initial investigative work mm -hmm. with the computer, mm -hmm. and a, a civilian couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But the Crime Stoppers program, while we work with law enforcement, 
-hmm. We are completely separate. We're a 501c3 that is completely separate okay. from law enforcement. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure the public knows that right. because a lot of times they're tentative to come forward mm -hmm. to I, law enforcement. Right. Now, I heard you say earlier that the community is first. We have to be your eyes and ears. And so can you tell me, are you empowering the citizens to just go out and intervene? I know you're not saying we need vigilantes, so how should the community conduct themselves again when they want to be a part and they're so you know, sure. ambitious in being a part of solving the crime? What, are there some rules and regulations to that? Right. We don't, want to, we don't ever want to put them in a situation where they might be in harm's way. Mm -hmm. So if you go back in, your, in history for policing in general, the, the father of policing is Sir Robert Peel from mm -hmm. England. One of his famous sayings is, the public is the police and the police are the public. Okay. So everybody has to work because mm -hmm. as a police officer, I live in the community. Mm -hmm. As a community member, they need to support the police department in their efforts. Mm -hmm. You've got to consider in, the, in Kansas City, it's about 318 square miles mm -hmm. in Kansas City. So it's a huge area to cover. There are about 1,400 law enforcement officers. Wow. We can't cover that entire area mm -hmm. with just 1,400 people. Right. So we need the help of the public to give us information. Mm -hmm. So to answer the question, we would love them if they are aware of a drug house, if they're aware of a fugitive that mm -hmm. we would air on TV, if they're aware of a serious crime that the news may, might feature. Mm -hmm. And they always run our phone number on the uh, mm -hmm. captions there. But if they're aware of any of that, call us. That information mm -hmm. is extremely important. We will get it to the detectives in the appropriate element that's mm -hmm. doing the investigation and let them handle it from there. Okay, so we have the community, we have the Crime Commission, and then you talked about the media. And how has social media helped enhance solving crimes in a quick manner? Social media is great, and uh, Crime Stoppers nationwide, there are multiple programs across the country involved in Crime Stoppers, and they've embraced it via Facebook, via Twitter, any of those social media outlets have been very helpful. Now, what we want to make sure that the people know is don't submit your information over those mm. mediums because it's not anonymous. Okay, very But what good. we do as a program is we push information out in those formats, mm -hmm. and we hope that people are paying attention and they can always report back to us anonymously at our number. Very good to know. And the number, again, is 816-474-TIPS, 816-474-TIPS. 8477, 8477, and that goes directly to Crime Stoppers. I see you have a website. The website is www.kccrimestoppers.com. That's kccrimestoppers.com. You routinely also, if you miss it on social media or you missed it on the nightly news, you have a website that you say, we are looking for these dangerous criminals. And tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so the website hopefully is interactive. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the, a link on the website where you can submit information anonymously. Okay. So in addition to calling us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you're always going to get a live operator. If you don't feel comfortable calling, you can also submit anonymously via your phone. We mm -hmm. accept texts, and we also accept web submissions. Now, again, wow. all three are anonymous. Okay. We don't record any personal information. Mm -hmm. We don't ask personal information. We don't trace cell phone numbers. We don't have recording devices. What happens is the software that we use generates a code number mm -hmm. for all of our tipsters. Mm -hmm. That code number serves as your identity. So that's all mm -hmm. we know our tipsters by. And you keep stressing anonymous because you realize it's if it's not, if you don't protect the caller's identity, they're not going to help you do your job. We don't have a program. It's right. that simple. If we don't ensure these uh, individuals that we mm -hmm. are anonymous, we don't have a program. Right. Callers never have to testify in court. They never have to reveal their name. Because we don't know it. Right. Let's talk about this second chance program. Because unfortunately, as soon as you're cleaning up um, you know, and, and trying to rehabilitate them and they're incarcerated for a moment, a lot of these people are coming back home, right? Correct. So what's the second chance program? Okay. So as a part of the Crime Commission, uh, there is uh, a reentry program known as Second Chance. It okay. just started in 2009. Okay. And what it does is it deals specifically with with uh, offenders that are, they've served their sentence, they're coming out of prison, and what it wants to do, the intent is to uh, prevent them from recidivating or going back to prison. Okay. So on average in the state of Missouri, if a, a, a felon will come out of prison, they're going to 
chances are of them going back to prison is about 83%, which is Incredible. a ridiculously high number. That doesn't benefit society. That mm. doesn't benefit the offender. Mm -hmm. So we want to reintegrate them into society. Mm -hmm. uh, the successful individuals that have completed second chance through the Crime Commission's mm -hmm. program, the recidivism rate there is about 14%. Wow. So it helps them get housing, mm -hmm. education, job mm -hmm. placement, mm -hmm. and just training, reintegrate mm -hmm. them into society. And it's been extremely successful. Mm -hmm. Some people say, why invest time and energy? They're a big boy, they're a big girl, you know. Why should we have to use our taxpayers' dollars to train them, to counsel them, to help them not go back to prison? Just do your job. <laughs> there's, there's a couple points there, and, mm -hmm. and, and the key point there is the taxpayer money. So it's cheaper to keep them out of prison than it is to send them back. So you're saving as, a, as I am. Cheaper as to a, keep her. Right, yeah, right. So right. As, as a citizen, you're saving my tax dollars by keeping these people mm -hmm. in gainful employment, out of prison. You're also preventing yourself from potentially being a victim again. Uh, if they're not going to recidivate, they're not going to commit crime anymore. It's a win-win for everybody. Right. Talk about the SAFE program in closing, and you have so sure. many wonderful programs, so we're going to have to have really you come do. back. Well, thanks. But what's the SAFE program? SAFE is the Surviving Spouses Endowment Fund. Okay. Uh, that's operated um, through the Crime Commission again, mm -hmm. and that program provides immediate assistance to families of fallen firefighters, mm -hmm. police officers, or emergency service personnel that are killed in the line of duty. SAFE will present a check within 24 hours to the to the fallen uh individuals, uh, public safety officers, mm -hmm. family, uh, that'll help them get through that initial mm -hmm. stage of the process. This is, these are just wonderful programs that you provide for our community. Um, are we doing a little bit better on the rise in crime, or do you think because it's publicized more now that we're just finding out about more crime, criminal activity? You know, Kansas City uh, last year had its lowest homicide rate in almost four decades. So we're wow. doing something right, you <laughs> know, job. and there's a lot of people to thank for that. The police department, of course, with Kansas City, the mm -hmm. Casey Nova, mm -hmm. and some other programs out there that are really doing a good job. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, all big cities have issues. I think Kansas City does a great job of communicating with each other and working very well mm -hmm. to address them. Detective Bam, why do you do what you do every day? You've been doing it for over 30 years now, and, and it doesn't seem like you're slowing down. Uh, it's a great job. I, I, I've been at it for almost 23 now, and it's just a wonderful job, mm -hmm. and I really feel like I get... I get something out of it, mm -hmm. trying to benefit these these people that help us. Right. So it's a great job. We want to thank our special guest, Detective Kevin Bam, being here representing the Kansas City Metro Crime Commission and Crime Stoppers. In closing, the information is on the screen. There are reward monies. You will um, have your name and your phone number held anonymously if you help stop crime. So go to 816 474 tips if you can be a part of this process. Again, 474 8477. There's a wonderful website that will help keep your community cleaned up and a safe, livable place for your family. It's kccrimestoppers.com. If you want to know any more about second chance programs, helping ex offenders, um, and also the SAFE program, you can also contact them at the same time. And we want to thank Detective Kevin Bam thank for you. being Great here to today. You. I'm Kimberly Warren. We thank each of you for watching TBN Kansas City. St. Joseph. Have a wonderful week. Some people say beauty is only skin deep, but what you don't see may actually hurt you. Today we're going to talk about skin cancer. I'm Kimberly Warren with TBN Kansas City St. Joseph. Hang on to your seat. You're in for a treat. You are watching Joy in Our Town. Dr. Shelley Ferris, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me today. It is so great to have you here, and we have a long list of questions about skin cancer. Yes, it's an important topic. Yes, today you are representing Mary Lanning Healthcare. Yes. Out of Nebraska, my, yep. where I was born. <laughs> very good. And we're gonna talk about a very important topic. We talk all the time about breast cancer, prostate mm -hmm. cancer, which is very prevalent in our society, but how prevalent is skin cancer? Well, skin cancer is actually the most common cancer in the United States, um, even before breast and prostate cancer. Um, and usually when they talk about breast cancer and prostate cancer being the most common for females and males, they'll say, they'll always say at the end, except for skin cancer, because skin oh, cancer wow. is the most common. That's um, incredible because yeah. we would think because of the media and uh, certain cases and certain yes. medications that are always at the forefront, we don't hear a, 
I mean, as much about skin cancer. That's true. That's true. So who is at risk? Who's most at risk for it? Well, everybody who is exposed to the sun okay. is at risk. There are people that are at higher risk. Mm -hmm. uh, those people tend to be fairer skinned with light hair and light eyes. Oh but that doesn't mean that darker skin people don't have the same risks. Mm -hmm. um, the risk is less, but it's still there. And when we talk about risk and talk about statistics, then we are always talking about a population. Okay. So we'll say a certain percentage of people have a higher risk, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it is for you or not. So each and every person needs to individually watch for themselves. Mm -hmm. The other things that increase risk are people with a large number of moles. Mm -hmm. So if, they ha if a person has a lot of moles, it's important to, to let your healthcare provider know that. Mm -hmm. um, also a family history of melanoma or skin cancers increases your risk. Very interesting. Yeah. When talking about who's most at risk, at risk, let's talk about specifically age-wise because there's a lot of products for children and yes. sunscreens and now makeup, a lot of makeup have certain SPFs and all of mm -hmm. that. So tell us what that means and sh how concerned should we be um, for children, for youth, and for the seniors? Okay. Well, the things we talk about when we talk about protecting from the sun and ultraviolet rays, mm -hmm. we'll talk about SPF, which mm -hmm. is sun protective factor. Okay. And that's what we talk about with sunscreens. Okay. And then there's also UPF, which is ultraviolet protective factors. Mm -hmm. And that's what we talk about with clothing. Okay. Because they have a lot of clothing now that can help protect us from the sun also. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the makeups and products like that will have an SPF of 15. Okay. And the, what that means is if you have that product on, it will take 15 times longer for your skin to turn red than it would if you didn't have it on. And when the skin turns red, that's, that is our body's way of protecting itself from the damage. A lot so of the, the kid products may say 40 or more. Yes. That means there's a lot of protection. Yes. 40 times harder to get burned. Or it takes, yeah, 40 times longer okay. for you to burn okay. than if you didn't have it on. Mm -hmm. And we definitely recommend for if you're going to be outside playing and things like mm -hmm. that and going to be exposed to the sun, that you definitely have at least an SPF 30 or higher. Mm -hmm. Um, you should put it on a half hour before you go outside because it doesn't. Sitting there on the beach like they show in the commercials. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Well, that would be reapplying okay. after two okay. hours. I'm sure those people are reapplying. Okay, because <laughs> that's important right. too. Okay, but yeah, you know, usually sometimes it's hard because you're kind of chasing them out the door and then mm -hmm. you're chasing them around the yard. And really, in my household, everybody just knows that kids that have sunscreen on can go outside. So no Which beach without a towel or sunscreen. Or sunscreen, <laughs> okay. yep. And so you can put it on and, you know, if you're at the beach, put it on the hotel room before you head to the beach. Mm -hmm. um, plus it makes it a little easier because you're not around the sand. Everybody's mm -hmm. trying to get ready, get dressed. Same thing before you head out for the day. Keep it by the back door. Everybody has to have it on before they go mm -hmm. outside. And then reapply every two hours. Okay. Um, you should sort of fill the palm of your hand. So if it's a child, it would be about their palm size. For mm -hmm. adults, our palm size. Okay. And if you're doing a lot of swimming or exercising and sweating a lot, you mm -hmm. should reapply more than every two hours. Now, when it's warmer outside, we're not just talking about the beach and swimming. That's we're right. talking about biking, sitting at ball games for hours. So That's right. So at any time where we're exposed to the sun, should we be considering protection? Absolutely. Um, every day, you know, going to work, a little bit in and out of the car, things mm -hmm. like that. Some of those lotions and things like that with the SPF 15 are probably okay, but anything beyond that should really be an SPF mm -hmm. of 30 or more. The other things you can do, especially ball games and things like that, is wear, you know, sun hats, cowboy hats, broad brimmed hats. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have protective clothing on. Uh, my children, I actually... Um, they know the rule is, is between the hours of 10 and 4, which is when the rays are most harmful, mm -hmm. they have to wear their swim shirts. Ah. So my kids are the lucky ones at the, <laughs> at the pool. They have turtlenecks and long sleeve shirts ah, um, that they wear, and, and they make sure they've got sunscreen on their legs. And then mm -hmm. if we're swimming in the evening time, they can wear their regular suits. And since we've just made it a rule, there really isn't any arguing. It mm -hmm. just is it's just what we do. You see so many people on the reactive end after they have cancer. 
Yes. So you want to prevent that. Yes. And it's very, very important, especially in the younger years of children. Getting blistering sunburns is significantly increases your risk of getting melanoma later in life. So a lot of people will say, well, the sun damage happens as a kid. So mm -hmm. now that I'm adult, I don't have to worry. But really, it's an ongoing damage. Wow. So if it is very important in the younger years not to be sunburned and be protected from the sun. Mm -hmm. But throughout life, it's sort of a cumulative mm -hmm. effect. So if your DNA was damaged as a child, then as we get older and the longer we're in the sun, that damage continues to happen. And melanoma is skin cancer. It's the most deadly form. Mm -hmm. And approximately um, 120,000 people in America are diagnosed with melanoma every year. It is damage to the melanocytes in our skin that then lose their control of their own growth. And that's mm. when they become malignant and cancerous. Wow. Now, we're, you said later in life. Let's talk about that group, that 20 to 30 euro we talked about before yes. the show began. Because sometimes people think, oh, those moles and those old skin tags, that's yeah. just something that happens to older people. Yeah. What's happening with the 20 to 30 year olds that may not want the high um, coverage because yes. they want the tan? Because, because they want the tan. The problem is, is that over the past 30 years, we have seen an increase in the the number of melanomas that are being diagnosed. Mm. And that can happen even in the 20 to 30 year olds. And we know that if starting in tanning beds and things like that in the younger years significantly increases the risk of developing a melanoma. Wow. Um, the, the ultraviolet rays in the tanning beds mm -hmm. Or it can be about 12 times the strength of the sun. That's why you can get in a tanning bed for 20 minutes and oh, get a tan. Wow. But the problem is, mm -hmm. is that damage is there also. For a while, we were thinking that some of the UV rays that were used in tanning beds might be safer than the sun. But further studies are showing that's not true. Mm -hmm. Really, tanning beds or the sun, it's that cumulative exposure. And they have really, they really have great products now uh, for self-tanners, spray tan. Mm -hmm. You know, 10, 15 years ago, everybody would walk around kind of a little orange. orange. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but they really have gotten a lot better. Mm -hmm. And and so it's sometimes, you know, people will just use them for special things like vacations and things like that. Mm -hmm. But they have some at-home tanners that actually have SPF built into them oh, okay. that you can apply sort of over time. And they don't seem to be very streaky. And there's lots of really wonderful products out there. Mm -hmm. So do you um, attribute the increase in melanoma, um, this type of cancer, due to tanning earlier? Do you think it's due to more people going to the beach or staying outside at, at outdoor activities? Or does it have something to do with this ozone layer not protecting us as well as it used to? I think it's probably a, a factor of all of that. Okay. I, I think it's that we, you know, people are trying to tan more and things like that. Tanning mm -hmm. at younger ages and, and perhaps the ozone also. Mm -hmm. Although the UVA and UVB which is the ultraviolet A and B waves, okay. they do penetrate through the ozone. Mm -hmm. They also penetrate through clouds. Uh. And that's what we worry about is those ultraviolet rays. Mm -hmm. And they are actually, they're a shorter wavelength than light waves. So we can't actually see the, the rays that, that harm us. So even on a cloudy day, even if you're not seeing a lot of sunlight, those damaging rays make their way through. Just so especially in the summertime when mm -hmm. we are a little closer to the sun mm -hmm. on cloudy days to make sure to wear some. Mm -hmm. But those rays are also reflected back by snow and reflective things like water. Mm -hmm. So even if it's not summertime, it's important to always protect your skin. Just incredible. If you're just now tuning in to TBN Joy in our town, our special guest is Dr. Ferris. We are talking about melanomas and skin cancers. If we do not get all of your questions answers today, please give her a call at Mary Lanning Healthcare, located in Hastings, Nebraska, but she will take calls from all yep. over. It is 402-463-4521. That's 402-463-4521. Or you can go to the website, Mary Lanning Lanning.org. That's www.marylanning.org. Let's talk a little bit about the damage that skin cancer does because some people think, oh, just take it off topically or yeah. cut it off. And is it only skin deep? 
It's not always skin deep, and it depends a little bit on the type of skin cancer. The most common type of skin cancer is what we call a basal cell carcinoma, okay. followed by a squamous cell carcinoma. And cancers are named after the cell type that they start from. Okay. So it can start in the basal layer of the dermis mm. of the skin, or it could start with those squamous cells, which is what our skin is made up of. Okay. The most deadly form of skin cancer starts in the melanocytes. And mm. that is the what gives us color. Okay. And that is where the melanoma can come from. Most basal cell and squamous cell carcinomas can be cured by surgically removing them. Mm -hmm. Rarely they metastasize. Okay. Um, the melanoma, it is the one that, that can is or is at a higher risk of metastasizing, which means the cancer that starts at the skin travels or metastasizes to elsewhere in the body, including the lung, the liver, and the brain. Mm. So surgery is always an important part of the treatment, mm -hmm. um, but they will be looking at other factors too as to whether it is involving the lymph nodes or if it's elsewhere in the body. Mm -hmm. Like I said, about 120,000 people are diagnosed in the United States with mm -hmm. melanoma um, and over 6,500 people die from melanoma every year in the wow. States. Um, I think it is, it's about a two to 4% risk of us mm -hmm. in our lifetime developing a melanoma. Mm -hmm. But that basal cell and squamous cell is, is very high risk and it is the most common cancer that people are diagnosed with. Mm -hmm. It is rare to die from a basal cell or squamous cell, but they can be very deforming. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they will happen on the bridge of the nose, on the lower lip, mm -hmm. on the rims of the ear, um, and it can happen on the scalp and really anywhere else that is sun exposed. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to keep track of your skin, look at your skin, pay attention to yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're noticing some changes in your skin or if you notice that a mole is changing or getting an ulcer or bleeding or growing, all of those things are a cue to go in and get it checked out with your physician. Dr. Ferris, we're, mm -hmm. it sounds like we're all at risk regardless of if we have more melanoma or if we're very brown skin yeah. or have beautiful um, you know, Latina or whatever yeah. our skin color is. Does it sound like we're all at risk and need some type of protection for our skin? Everybody's at risk, so protection and surveillance or okay. keeping an eye on yourself. Okay. Again, so even with darker skin, your risk is lower, but remember those statistics are for the population. So though, although I can say, well, this percentage, I don't know if that percentage is you or not. Okay, okay. <laughs> Dr. Shelley Ferris, thank you so oh, much for being for here today and keeping me. us safe, healthy, and well. Oh, and we want to thank you all for watching TV and joining our town again, Mary Lanning Healthcare is where you can find Dr. Shirley, Shelley Ferris at um, in Hastings, Nebraska. You can call her at 402-463-4521. It's right there on your screen, 402-463-4521, or go to their website, www.marylanning.org. I'm Kimberly Warren. Have a wonderful week. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and made possible by your telephone dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town brought to your home every day. So write Joy in Our Town, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.